So a few minutes ago, I was in my kitchen and I discovered something pretty disturbing and it made me audibly say, this video is gonna suck. I'm alone, but I hear a little voice come out of my son's bedroom that said, all your videos suck. Hey buddy. Yeah? Uh, do you still think my videos suck? Yep. <laughs> How could this happen to me? My son is my biggest troll. What did I discover? Well, today's video is supposed to be on the Angelfish Aquarium, like I told you yesterday. However, when I was coming out to film a bit, of, a little bit more of it, gather the footage that I've already created, I realized that I deleted all of it off of this memory card so I could film yesterday's video. I always wipe my memory cards clean, but I forgot that I had footage on there. So today I'm gonna walk you through what I did, show you before and after. Uh, however, I deleted the tearing this tank down, taking all the fish out, removing everything from it, cleaning it, doing the fish selection, etc. But maybe you guys can just imagine it as we go along. Before we begin though, a little shout out. So some of you guys may or may not know my friend Rachel O'Leary, who also has a YouTube channel here on YouTube. She's also an aquarium channel and makes aquarium videos probably a little bit better than mine. With that said, she's about to hit 100,000 subscribers and I fear that she's going to hit it in the middle of the night like I keep doing whenever I hit Whenever I hit a million subscribers, it happened like a one or two in the morning. You can't even enjoy it because you're so tired. If you guys would do me a favor, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. She's like 300 subscribers away. I'd like for her to hit 100,000 before the end of the evening so she can actually see it and enjoy it and watch it live and maybe you guys can as well. Plus she can consider this my congratulations because I'll probably forget about it later on. With that said, Let's talk about the angelfish tanks. You guys will remember when we originally set this up, we got about, what, 25, 30 platinum angels. We actually got a mix of them, though. We've got the platinum angels, and then we also got some of the pearl scale angels. Now, we only have a couple of the pearl scales in there, and I got the best fish, actually. The best angelfish ended up being a pearl scale. It's a large male. He's doing fantastic. I'm actually having a lot of breeding activity in this tank since I did this. They're responding better. They're eating better. This tank is going to be absolutely amazing here shortly. Let me walk you through what originally happened though. We originally set this tank up with some manzanita creating a bit of a u-shape with lots of overhangs. We added in all the angelfish. The reason why I got that many angelfish at first which is typically not advised for 120 is if you didn't watch yesterday's video I walked you through why I had to order so many fish at once essentially just to fill a bag. I had to order a certain minimum amount, fill the box etc but I had always said that we'll eventually dwindle the stocking down, hone it into the best ones, uh, a nice ratio. Right now we have five males, we have, um, the rest are females. There's 12 angels in there uh, total. And I would say about anywhere, eight would probably be the best amount, but I couldn't decide on the final 12. However, to get started, I removed all of the decorations from the aquariums. I decided I'm not gonna use Anubius in there anymore. I put that all into the Exodon tank up here is just floating around. I'm probably gonna use it another day. With that said, I really regret not having a ton of plants. I'm gonna go ahead and buy a bunch of mother plants. If you don't know what a mother plant is, basically when it comes to uh, Java ferns, for example, you can get them in big mats. A lot of uh, retailers will just pull off pieces and sell you individual clippings or whatever the case might be. But if you buy the mat, you get this big massive piece. I think I'm gonna buy a bunch of those or not that expensive, maybe 20, 25 bucks, something like that. We did that originally for the 2000 when we had plants in there. But I think that's the last thing I wanna to do to add to this tank. I also thought about adding tetras, but anyways, we took out everything, cleaned the tank up a bit. Uh, removed all the angelfish and then I went through the fish, uh, fish selection. What I was looking for is uh, males and females. Now a male angelfish is not really that identifiable at this size but a lot of the times if you look at the nape of their head which is from almost their dorsal fin to the tip of their nose a female is going to be almost flat where the male will be kind of bubbled out a little bit. That is their nuchal hump. Believe it or not angelfish, male angelfish also get a nuchal hump. So for me, a lot of the times that's a telltale sign that that's a male. So I was looking to get a 50-50 ratio because who knows, maybe we'll end up with just a pair in here, but angelfish get surprisingly large, especially the scalares. I also look for proper fin form, uh, no deformities in the body, a good ratio of head to eye size. Uh, angelfish can get surprisingly stunted and you can see that in their eyes a lot of the times where their eyes will get way too big for their body. So what I was doing essentially, picking the best ones out while keeping the male to female ratio good, or at least the closest I can get to it. And I think we did a great job there. From there, I wanted to make sure that we have a large open swimming area. As you can see, they have way more swimming area than ever before. 
We only have two pieces of manzanita in here and over in the corner here, I kind of made them look like it was one piece, attached a few pieces of the java fern to it. And again, I want this to be coated in java fern. I want, I want as much as I can do. And in fact, I'm thinking I might even drill a few holes in the background and stuff some big mats in there because java fern doesn't need a substrate to grow in. The best part about it is it'll grow in a tremendous amount of lighting conditions. You don't really have to add additives to the tank. It'll do great on just the mineral content of your tap water, as well as the nitrates and waste that the fish are producing. And it takes a lot to kill it. And believe me, I'm, I kill every type of plant there is besides the java ferns, uh, Anubias and java moss. Ever wonder why I use a lot of those? That's why. Then took a few of the little pieces of wood and just kind of jam them over into the side. Just kind of finish it off. Um, give it a more symmetrical look. I don't really pay attention to the rules of one-thirds. I don't pay attention to any of that. What I do is I focus on what's best for the fish, uh, what's best for them long-term, how they'll interact with the environment, and then of course I want it to be aesthetically pleasing to me. If you guys are wondering why this tank was here, that was what I was doing the fish selection in. I filmed it, I had lights on it. It was, an, it was gonna be a crazy good video, or at least interesting as to fish selection and whatnot, but we're gonna do this a few more times and I'll make sure that we don't delete all that footage just yet. Now I do have a question, which one did you prefer? Before or after? The most of you are going to say before. It looked more full, there was more decorations, etc. I completely agree. However, long term, that was never going to work. Too many fish, uh, not enough room for them to actually grow. Fish will grow to their environment to an extent and with giving them more space and more room while still making them feel comfortable in the tank. Look, these angelfish are not that skittish at all. So when you come up out of the blue and just, and, and just kind of attack the tank, maybe one or two might go, but eventually these guys are used to it. Like they don't, they don't care. That's a good sign. Now I don't suggest you go sp smashing your hand up against your tanks and see if you can emulate that, but that's typically a good, or a good sign that the fish are starting to acclimate a little bit better as long as they're not listless or anything. These guys are eating, actively searching for food, just fed them so they're good to go. Uh, I got another video coming out tomorrow, but it's going to be extensive, very difficult to film. Here's why. The next tank I'm going to tackle in terms of making some changes is the 375. Number of things I need to do to it. First and foremost, I'm gonna give it a good cleaning. Uh, I haven't really scrubbed this tank. I've been doing water changes, but being such a large tank, I tend to leave most of it alone. I don't mind when algae grows. A lot of people are like, oh, your tanks have algae. That's fantastic. It handles nitrates, gives the fish something to chew on and eat. They don't eat it completely, but um, it's not as bad. It's just ugly, especially if it's on your panels and whatnot. However, if you look at the rocks, the rocks are coated in it. This took me um, leaving the light on 24 hours or 36 hours to accomplish, but to get them to all look the same, I think that looks amazing, doesn't it? The algae's not so bad. I'll leave those rocks alone. Just want to control where it's growing on. The manzanita is going to be a bastard to clean though. Um, it's always, all my manzanita is, is pretty gross. Anyways, I got to clean this tank, but I got to also get the bicher out of it. Guess where the bicher is? He stays way in the back. So the only way for me to get him, and I can't just net him, I gotta take out all of this wood. I'm gonna leave the rocks in. I'm gonna take all of this wood so I can easily chase him down. I'll chain the tank by about 50%. I will clean it up a bit. I will catch that bicher. I will move him down with the flower horn so, for the, so they can have a bit of a reunion. Um, and then, uh, of course, filling it back up, rescaping it. Hopefully it looks this good, but a little prettier. But, then we're moving all of the rainbows in. This was, uh, almost everybody said that was a great idea. And many more of you said moving the bass in with the discus is a bad idea. And that's a video that we're gonna have to do here eventually is dwindle the stocking. Some people said, you know what, just start over. You're right, bad genetics, horrible quality, etc. Start over with the discus or just do something different. You've done discus and you have so many videos on them. And that's true, I guess. I just feel like if, if I don't have discus again, I'm gonna feel a little weird. I've kept discus for, what, 10, 10, 15 years or something like that, something like that. It feels like uh, they've always just been a part of my hobby, but I'm just not satisfied with those fish. But yeah, a few people said, don't move the bass over there. The discs aren't going to appreciate their aggressive feeding, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, ah, yeah, you're right, I guess. And others said, don't move the giant Garami into the 2000, he'll pick on, et cetera. We'll see what happens. He's got a ways to go. Um, maybe I'll just give him a 120 by himself, but I don't want too many pet fish or too many feature fish. 
It's up to you guys though. What do you think? I love your feedback. Yesterday's video was absolutely an eye opener for me, thinking I was on the right track, but also give me more ideas and better suggestions, etc. I'm only one person and I film these on the fly, so everything you're hearing is coming off the top of my head and I don't come up with every idea and the best ideas all at once because I don't plan a lot of this out. I just film it, bring you guys along for the ride, and I hope it truly feels like you're in here with me because right now I feel like I'm talking to you. And that means a lot to me because making videos alone for 10 years is very, can get boring. Anyways, tomorrow I will tackle the Bicher. That's going to be a task in itself. I, I suspect that's gonna take about anywhere from four to six hours to completely fix that tank up and get it looking a little bit better. I'm excited. I know a lot of people also want the flower horns out here as a more featured fish because we never actually go in there. I, that's true to an extent right now, but that will be changing. We'll be out there a lot more and I don't know and I don't actually even think the flower horns will stay out there permanently. I think they will come in here and uh, you guys will get to see them a lot more. With that said, I will tackle the Bicher tomorrow because it's actually getting pretty late and I want to get this video out for you guys before too long. I think that's it. Make sure you subscribe to my friend Rachel, get her to that 100,000 before it's too late. Just do 300 subs after that, cut her off. Um, no, I'm kidding. So, so you'll enjoy her content. She makes great videos. Very educational, very smart, and very entertaining. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, though. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow.